with that thudding, mauling kind of presence. Impression he gives that he's the bully in there is because he's a smart fighter. It's very disciplined. He put an incredible pressure. It's a pressure that makes his opponent panic. They don't know what to do. 15-0 with 15 knockouts. Archer Better BF is the unified light heavyweight champion of the world. This guy's gonna take on a wrecking ball mentality and do his thing. Overhand right from Better BM. Better BM is dominating here. He goes down again. Oh, and a clubbing shot. That's it. It's over. Adam Davis. Thunder is blown to the head. He goes down. What a Joe Tessitore didn't cover that fight. Hey, some fancy smanchy dubbing there, huh? I caught that. What are you guys doing? Let's let this play through. Thunder is blown to the head. He goes down. What a brutal shot. And a TKO win. Well, Top rank on ESPN Plus this weekend. Bert Biev is taking on Dennis, Adam Dennis. This guy right here, I've been watching some tape. This other guy's fighting is Finn Manlong. I forgot how to pronounce his name, man. Well, Ming Fanlong. This is the guy Bert Biev was supposed to fight. And wasn't this guy like his IBF mandatory, whatever the case may be? Anyway, I'm T Street Controversy with FightView360.com. We cover every single major fight live. And here is Bert Biev and this dude facing off. I expect a massacre. It's gonna be ugly. They even had some savage press uh, questions at the press conference, like basically, like disrespecting the shit out of Dennis. You gotta watch it. I was at Bert Biev's last fight in Philly of all places where he fought, um, did full coverage for that fight. Media event, press conference, all that. Well, where he fought, uh, Alexander Volzdik. Philly has a nice, strong Ukrainian crowd, shockingly. Me being from Philly my whole life didn't even know that. So, here we are right now. It's a little bit frustrating because when you look at the division as a whole, you think it to yourself like, okay, well, what the fuck was going on? It seems as though everything was going good and they were on like a collision course to get, you know, a unified champion in that division. But then, you know, Bert Tabiev has been having some issues, you know, him and his opponents. I don't know if he got COVID himself, but there's been a lot of, you know, fucking around over there. Now, I don't know what's going on with Fan Long Ming. Wasn't Bert Tabiev supposed to fight Fan Long Ming in China? Wasn't that supposed to be a thing? But COVID stopped it. Now he's fighting this guy and COVID stopped this fight too. This man. 19 1 and 1 with just 10 KOs. Ooh, from Germany. Adam Dennis, light heavyweight Southpaw. This right here, the Fan Long Ming fight, we were just watching some tape on. You know what y'all think? Y'all think y'all think uh Dennis sees something in 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 Archer? Does he see something? I don't know, bro. Okay, okay, okay. All right, that's it. I'm about to be on Team Dennis now. Pause. No, I'm not. Take that back. Well, looking at the light heavyweight division, you're like, okay, all right, you're pretty top heavy. There's not really any names that really, really stick out. I mean, yeah, you got Joshua Buati, who's going to be returning soon, by the way. Blake uh, Caparello just lost last week on the uh, Mundine versus Arafa card. So he's going to fall straight down the rankings. Him and Buati was actually a thing at one point in time. Marcus Brown, we don't know what the hell he's doing. Isn't him and Jean Pascal supposed to be fighting? Again, what's going on with that? And then you got Badu Jack, who fought on a Triller card, uh, Tyson versus Jones. So, Gilberto Ramirez is back and competing at 175 pounds. And who did Gilberto Ramirez sign with? Isn't he with Golden Boy? So, what's going on with Dimitri Bivol? Now, he's been flirting with 168 pounds, talking about it. 
but he's got to fight somebody. And right now, this division is very close to being unified. It can be unified. Now, you have Joe Smith versus Maxim Vaslov. That's going to be happening in April. That fight was postponed because um, Vaslov had COVID, but it's back on the schedule. So I predict that the winner of Berta B.S. Dennis is going to fight the winner of Smith versus Vaslov. But then what's Dmitry Bivol doing? But that has to happen. You see what I'm saying? And let's not forget, what was I going to say before I forgot? By the way, my website, fightv360.com, our rankings are updated in accordance with the hold on. My bad, damn office phone had it wrong. So, what I was saying is, um, Berta Biev, if you look at it, with just 15 fights, 15 KOs, you know he's 36 years old. Remember at one point in time, he had a real fast start. People were like, yo, he's fighting guys like Tavoris Cloud. And Gabriel Campillo before like 10 fights. And then he just stalled. Now one thing I do have to point out is. One, at one point in time he was involved with this promoter. Canadian promoter. Who um, works with top rank. His name is um, Yvonne Michel up in Canada. Dude was pretty shady at one point. Because at one point in time he pretty much ruled the 175 pound division. And had guys like Bert DBF. Joan Pascal. And I forgot who. Uh, uh, Adonis Stevenson. And he wasn't letting those... He, didn't he have Volzik at one point in time too? Whatever the case is, he wasn't having them fighting each other. And Berta Biev was caught up in like a, um, a promotional situation with him that kind of stalled his career a little bit. And then with COVID, it didn't help things. So right now, he can be an undisputed champion at 175. But as far as 2021 is concerned, they got to keep they got to keep it moving. Like after this dude, he needs to fight the winner of Joe Smith versus um, Voslov or Dmitry Bivo. They got to get that done. Like, whether you do it in Russia, like, get it done. You know, because people are getting fed up. Because, like, these boxers be getting so close to, you know, something good. And then it's like they take steps back. And you're wondering, like, what the fuck be going on? Well, anyway, I'm going to be here covering the card. Um, in fact, let me pull up and see wh exactly what time it's coming on or broadcast here on ESPN Plus over here in the States. So it says here the card's going to be starting at 3 p.m. on ESPN Plus. The main card. And let's see what is going to be on the card. I'm interested in the Alexander Bisputin fight. He is ranked. Is that the dude? Don't know. I hope I'm not wrong. I hope I'm not wrong. Did he pop dirty? Is that him? The one that was supposed to fight um, Ugas? Let me check. Let me check. Hold on, guys. Let me check. It's important. It's important. Let me check. You, you're not the dude that popped dirty, are you? Let me check. Let me check. Oh, yeah, that was him. That was him. Well, anyway, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be watching the fight. So two fights I'm gonna be covering on this card are obviously the Bert B. F. Dina's card and the uh Beth Putin. Beth Putin. Versus Maximiliano, Ricardo Verón. Ooh, cool name, bro. From Argentina. They always pulling these Argentines from... Pulling them out from everywhere. Who else should I be looking out for the card? Let me know. Damn, he's still out here kicking? McHalkin? Igor? Jesus, look how deep this card is. But then again, those Russian cards be like that. And they're probably going to have some musical numbers, too, in between. Well, anyway, we're going to be here. So... I'm T-Street Controversy with FightView360.com. We cover every single major fight live. Please subscribe.